Sorry, moving my chair into place. <laughs> Just catching on the carpet. Yes, a tank, Fenrir. Uh, this is going to be a build video I'm going to re-upload re on YouTube. Um, just going over the TACOM 16 scale Weasel 1 Mark 20. In other words, it's a uh, airborne uh, light tank armed with a 20 millimeter cannon. Tracks. The cool thing is the tracks are all uh, snapped together. I've done the tow variant already. I wanted to do this one RC, but the more I looked at it, the more I'm like, eh, it'll be novelty more than anything. Uh, if I, if somebody at a later time makes one of these actually radio controlled, that would be great. Um, however, this this would not last very long. I know it's possible. I've seen videos of people who've done it. It's just not long term. Okay, we cannot lose this or this. These are part of the pistons for the gun mechanism. Photo etch parts for the exhaust. That's right, you're off this week. Well, I hope you're enjoying your time off. Now, I've already assembled the figure for this. Uh, TACOM does really great figures for their kits. The one for the tow launcher is even better than this one, I think. This one just comes in your standard uniform. The one for the tow launcher comes in uh, cold weather gear and all this other stuff. And first things first, we'll get all these bags opened up and then we can start working on the suspension, as the instructions say. Now, I am live streaming this on Twitch at the moment for anyone who's watching this on YouTube, so uh, I'm sorry if the conversation seems a little odd. Uh, also, there will be periods of silence as I'm just working on this, and nobody in chat's really talking. So, it happens. But sometimes you just want to kind of sit back and watch something get built. Um... Granted, I'm no night shift or plasma or anyone like that. I just try and do the best I can. Um, getting to the music, it won't show up on the YouTube VOD. That's one thing I had to check is make sure that the way I've got the filter set, it doesn't show up on the VOD for YouTube, so it doesn't get me any kind of copyright strikes or anything like that. Not that anything I'm doing is monetized anyway. It'd be cool if it was, but it's not. But isn't this how all the channels start? Little things like this, and then they get bigger? We hope.
All right. And we won't need the track sprues for quite a while. So they can stay sealed. So in case anything falls off, we don't lose it. We'll get the upper hull out of the way. We'll need lower hull, these sprues, and this sprue for right now. I need two of E31s. The suspension is meant to be um, flexible. So if you want to display it on a more dynamic base, you can. Um, however, being that it is plastic, it's not wisest. Okay, there's a box on the floor. It's keeping the cat occupied, so she hopefully won't get on the table in midstream. Sometimes she does do that, though, and we, we tolerate it. Sometimes they are. Um, Allie's been a weird one in that she sometimes likes boxes and sometimes she doesn't. I'm trying to remember if these go like this or if they go like that. I want to say like this because that is larger in there. Okay, I need I need my glasses or something because I'm going blind. Eh, the thing is, balls for puppers and cats invite more aggressive behavior in terms of jumping around and running. Whereas if you just keep it nice and quiet, they'll get in the box and play in the box and leave you alone. Okay, not enjoying what's playing right now. Um, seeing as how we are doing this for YouTube, let's keep that to a minimum, please. We're trying something different here. And it's cool to show off what's on the channel, so if somebody does see this on YouTube and they want to come over from Twitch, then please, by all means. But uh, let's not show it off and clog things up with it. Oh, 
almost sliced my finger getting that last one off. I need B19 and two E30s. That's why I've got the uh, the face cam turned off and the overlay turned off as well. I want just a clean presentation today. And honestly, I may leave them off. Actually, I can glue this on first and then use all that to line it up. The hard part's getting the flat spot on these axles lined up just right. If you're not putting the part on backwards either. And sometimes you just get tired of fighting with something, so you make it work. As long as they're glued in, it really doesn't matter. Not that it's a fit problem. Just the instructions aren't terribly clear on the orientation. It just shows you put axles in, glue down. Okay. And my fingers just aren't working too well today, either. Get a classic modeling utensil. You know, you can buy all those expensive clamps and stuff. Or you can just go to the dollar store and get yourself some wooden close pegs and I am not a perfectionist I don't try and build any kind of IPMS standards. I don't try and build to anything other than what I like. If I build a commission for somebody, I communicate with them very clearly as, as far as what they want, and I make sure I meet their requirements. But as far as personal stuff, nah, I have fun. I could care less about name brands. I could care less about expensive miracle fluids. I could care less about all that stuff. I try and use very simple techniques. 
that are more easily mastered than these miracle fluids they sell in bottles these days. Um, I just try and have fun with the hobby. I don't try and get buried in the minutia of what's better, ammo, AK, this or that, you know. It's all about fun. If you're not having fun, are you doing it right? If you're more worried about the consistency of your pigment than you are if you're having fun, are you doing it right? And I've even seen a, a trend lately of people complaining about older kits. I'm like, well, maybe if you do a little research before you buy, you won't be getting burned by that Ravel Black Widow or that Tamiya T34. There's more options on the market than there used to be. The only problems I have with any of the models I build are that I built them. <laughs> any other problems, unless it's something majorly, uh, extravagantly dumb, all the problems I have with the models I build are caused by me. So I need B28 and E32. Okay, it's okay. I make two of A and four of B, or no, I make one of A, four of B, one of C. Okay, And this will be a long form video for anyone who sits through and watches it all. Thank you very much. So, E13. So what models does everybody else like to work on? Um, I like a little bit of everything. I'll be doing figures, armor, some cars, sci-fi. So put down in the comments what you like to work on. And I use different techniques. I use self-mixed oil washes. Sometimes I'll dabble in the acrylic washes by like Vallejo and stuff. There's certain techniques that I like to use that the stuff off the shelf just can't do. To me, anyway. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it handles, the way it smells. The fact that you have to get proprietary materials from said line in order to make it work right. And while we're building this, you'll see some of the things I do that work a bit differently. This will be part one. We'll get as far as the assembly as we can today and then pick up more assembly uh, 
um, tomorrow or the next day, whenever I can get it uploaded. Now, Airy Studios commented in the Twitch stream uh, that he had this, a similar issue with the locating tabs on his Jag Panther. Was that also a TACOM kit? And generally, you won't hear me complain about a model, uh, especially ones tooled up any time after... I want to say the, the late 90s. Unless there's something fundamentally wrong with it. And by that, I mean, in the case of Border Model with their Tiger release and the, uh, the barrel came out of the mold like a banana. That is a fundamental flaw with the model. I don't really rivet count. I don't really care that much about total 100% accuracy as long as the model fits and builds and can be painted to me it's pretty damn good that said I won't hold the a 40 year old model to the same standard as a modern model And sometimes, sometimes I like a model that gives me a bit of a fight in that you have to do a little extra cleanup and a little extra work on it to make it shine. Because I have to say, some of the most boring models I've built are some of the ones that are considered to be the most accurate and best fitting. I've got a Tamiya F16 30 second scale. It's been sitting in my closet for the better part of 20 years now. I bought it back in 2006. So yeah, 17 years. And uh, I haven't finished it. I've been working on it, but I have no urge to work on it. Simply because it's boring. I know that seems blasphemous to some, but it's true. Sometimes a kit can be too good and too clean and too nice. Before I go gluing anything together, I gotta see something. Because these are all supposed to be trailing arms. I just wanted to be sure I was gonna be able to glue these in place. I will. Okay. 
because the peg that goes in here has a D shape to it. I just don't know the angle in particular. But it'll work. I just wanted to be sure I wasn't setting myself up for a mistake. Which is funny considering, like I said, I've built the other one. I just can't remember much about it because I built it two or three years ago when it first came out. So I don't know how far we'll get on today's video or how long is too long for YouTube as far as people wanting to watch it. But I've always found this vehicle interesting, though. I remember the AFV Club kit came out way back in the 90s. It was early 2000s. It was a while ago. Over 20 years. Um, tried building it a couple times over the years. The tracks were always too short. So they'd snap off the uh, axles for the idler wheel. One trick I learned to deal with that is uh, hang the track up and then clip or tape or attach, however you can, a couple bottles of paint. <laughs> Let it hang for a couple days. The, the weight of the paint will stretch out the rubber band track if it's a little too short. And if it, can, if it contracts back later, that's okay, because it'll only go as far as the tension will allow it to. But it's better than possibly snapping an axle on the plastic kit trying to install it. Okay, there is a slight angle in the bottom of that piece that angles the suspension arm. Good. Like I say, I don't go by names, and you'll see Tamiya on my bottle of glue here. That's just the bottle. The glue inside is actually Plastrux Bonding. I find it works better. You get twice as much for half the money. And you can fill two bottles of this for the one. The only reason I keep the bottle is the square design it is actually pretty smart and it keeps it from tipping. And I put it on the right way. There's a notch there. I just remember there being a shock here.
and I'm going to do long form videos like this on YouTube for now until I learn some editing or something. I'm just testing the waters, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. I've been doing a lot of shorts for anybody who is watching this and has been following the channel for a while. Just because I think it's more important just to put what I've done out there uh, clean. You know, with no... Um, no text other than a description of what it is. No, no nothing. Just showing people what I've done. As far as techniques and materials I use, I use a bunch of different stuff uh, simply because there's things I like, there's things I don't like, and I find if something works for me, I don't need to really go replacing it or looking for a much more expensive alternative. Kind of like the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I may even have a solution for a female tank to remember for this to stick in the driver's hatch. I don't know if there's any female Falsham Yager out there today, but they would be assigned to these. I'll have to look before I make that decision and close up the hull. Because the kit gives you a nice open driver's hatch, but only the one figure. So it would be nice to actually put something in there. So if I can make something work, I will. And for those watching on Twitch, if we have anybody in the audience, I hope you all had a good weekend. I think my printer just groaned at me. One moment. Printer is making weird noises. Um, may have to check that out. I've, I'm also doing some resin printing. It's going in the background right now. And what are you working on, Aries? Gotta be working on something. You've got your mandatory fun time now and not working on a model. Modding my channel. Um, there's really nothing going on. <laughs> Modding as in moderating or modding as in changing? <laughs> uh. 
I really don't think we're going to have an issue with anything today. My channel's still small, even though I've been doing this for six years, it's small. So I, I really don't expect anything to be going on there. Unless you're seeing trends that I'm not. I need the A sprue now. A fifteen. I think I'm more worried about YouTube comment section at this point than I am uh, Twitch chat and things like that. And I forget how this goes now. I might have to go look at my uh, finished one and see if I can remember how I did this. There we go. Never mind. I just had to pr pull the proverbial, proverbial head out my butt and uh, actually look at how things go. Nobody's perfect. Let me test fit something before I glue that on to make sure I'm not building myself into a corner here. But this will be my first full-length video that I put up there, so hope I'm not doing anything too stupid. As usual, I expect there to be a lot of, you should do this, you should do that. I'll take that as it comes. Okay, that will drop right in there. Before I glue this in, I want to get that installed. Because that's a mistake I did last time. So I'm, I'm using the uh, sprue gate nub to hold these little D-rings as I get them in place. And then once they're in place and somewhat dried, I can snip them off later.
Sí. Because I remember on the tow version, fighting with them along here, wishing I'd had something better to hold onto them with. And I saw that was on there. I'm like, hey, why was I stupid and take those off when I could have left them on? Okay, I'm trying to remember how this glues on now. I really shouldn't say remember because the instructions are here showing me. I just got to put it together in my own head. And this kit is actually very easy to assemble. I'm fumbling because of my own ineptitude. But anybody should be able to pick this up and build a pretty good representation of the real thing out of it. Aside from the photo etch, there's really nothing very complex about it. You don't need any kind of extremely specialized tools or anything like that. And it's a bit of a challenge. Not in a bad way, but just it's enough to keep you interested in it. I remember I did the twenty minute the the toe version in about a week. And hey, I know it's my first video, but if you like what's going on, you know, do the usual. If you really want, come visit me on Twitch when I'm streaming there. Uh, currently working on getting a schedule laid back out. I have a, I've had a few things come up where uh, having a set schedule isn't exactly um, possible. But hopefully in the next couple of weeks, one will become apparent and easily adjustable. I'm going to glue this on after I glue the wall to the back bulkhead. One, it's something I can easily flatten by putting my finger on it if I'm not careful. And two, the angle of the bulkhead will denote the angle this hangs at, because this has to be vertical. License plate holder, where are you? There you are. In the meantime, I hope somebody does come out with a conversion kit for this model to possibly make it RC. 
or something to that effect. Uh, the main thing is the plastic suspension and the axles. Yeah, I could sleeve them and shim them and all that. It's a bit more than I want to do right now. And the tracks being plastic, even in a very mild soil or surface, they will still wear on themselves and cause breakages, which eventually you can't fix. So replacing that with some form of metal track is a must. I know one was made a very long time ago by a German company. Uh, don't know how well the track and suspension parts would scale over because they are made for a completely different model. And I think the RC model made, uh, I think it was by AFV modeler, is also long out of production. But if they do own the parts to it still, or if they own the masters and are able to make the molds, See how well your parts would fit on this, or how difficult it would be to convert it over. See what we can do, you know? See about getting these weasels out there. And if Tacom keeps doing these, I hope they do the Ocelot, which is the uh, anti-air version. There's a radar guy, there's a radar version as well, and a there's quite a few versions of these, but they're on a stretch chassis. Um, but again, Tacom, if you're still making more of these, keep pumping them out. I will be addressing this seam. Uh, probably won't be until after everything is set up. Just trying to get as far as I can, and we'll do most of the seam work in one shot. That's also the great thing about armor. If you can't fix it, you can hide it with a lot of mud. And these things love to play in the mud. Or at least the crew likes to make them play in the mud. I might see about making some uh, 16th scale pine branches as well to put on it for camouflage. There's a YouTube video of one of these on exercise that looked really interesting with that on it. Okay. We'll need some tape. Letting the capillary action do the work. I'm going to have to look at how this print is doing and uh, turn it off if it's doing what I think it's doing. Oh. 
Again, run the glue along the seam. Just let the capillary action do the work. I may have torn off more tape than I needed, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. Okay, I held that open a little too far. You want the parts to be just lightly touching when you do this, so that way the glue can run down it and basically accelerate both parts. It melts the plastic together, essentially. go. I'm also making sure that there's absolutely nothing else I need to glue on the inside. Flexi suspension. Pop the armor plate in there. I try not to run it around the outside if possible, but sometimes you can't avoid it. There's too much of a lip here that keeps grabbing it and wicking it away to different areas. Because the upper part of this lip will grab it instead of letting it get to the actual seam that it needs to glue together. But we got it. I know there's people that swear by Tamiya Extra Thin. My glues of choice are either Plastruck Bondine or Ambroid Pro Weld. They're a little bit hotter. I just, I like how they work a bit better. There we go. Okay, next steps. We're going to make the front shocks. So E25 and 29. That's, that's B. I'm, I'm holding B sprue for some reason. There's 29, and 25, The road wheels I'm probably going to hold off on making uh, until we get the hull together and painted, uh, simply because I want to be able to paint the insides between them more effectively. It'll be like one of the last things we do.
Come on, snap on there. Snap on, please. There we go. And again. There we go. I probably could glue those, but I want them to be movable while I put them on the suspension. Again, if I was to do this RC, I would actually replace these with two pieces of telescoping tubing that I could then hinge into place uh, because of how they work on the real thing. They're basically going to lock the front suspension arms into place. Because this end glues in here, and then this other end clips on here. Ken is this. Thank you for the bits. How you doing? Right, let's get the goat out for the bits. And I am recording this video for rebroadcast on YouTube. So not doing, we're not disallowing um, communication, but just trying to keep it oriented toward the model. You know, I know Twitch allows for a certain amount of levity and brevity, but those rules are different. This will be downloaded tonight and then rebroadcast on YouTube tomorrow. Yes, I do the goat. How you been? I do the goat because you are the goats, especially those who do bits and subs. They uh, they do help a lot. They mean more to me than you think or expect. So far, we're we're in luck. Cats have been leaving me alone. Oh, these? Yeah, they're Zoron, not Zuron. They're knockoff ones that came with one of my printers. They work, though. Which reminds me, I need to pause and look at this print real quick, so there's going to be a bit of a standstill on the video. I've got tons of new prints that I'm working on. Um, the wife was nice enough to get me some resin last night, and I am working on Major Kusanagi by Dinamu 3D. Doing the nice version, not the not safe for work version. So A7. I'm just going to work from the front down the side for each side. Doing all the shocks and stuff. No, I don't. I wish I did. Um, I just, I don't have the head for it. You know, I'm sure I could learn if I really put my, my words are failing me. Um, if I really concentrated on it and gave it my all, I probably could learn, but 
I've got enough other hobbies right now. I don't need another one. I'm having enough fun building and painting, and I've got enough kits to last me forever. I don't need to go making more of my own outside of 3D printing them. It looks like there was an odd support failure. Should be cleanable, and the part might be supported well enough that it'll print. I hope it is, because it's the main torso. No, I don't want to listen to that. That'll work. Well, this is a uh, the Weasel 1 Mark 20. It's a small... I think this particular version is a two-person crew. The tow version is three. Uh, it's a small scout vehicle. And it's made by TACOM in 16th scale. AFV Club does it in seven or in 35th scale, and S model does it in 72nd scale. And the S model ones for their size come two in a kit. Um, I'm using, I believe it's Plastruck Bonding. No, it's Plastruck Pro, Pro Weld, but it's Bonding is another name it can go by. Uh, in a Tamiya bottle. Get these out of here. We might need those later. If we get to the uh, the hull joining portion of things, and I know I'm working in a big mess. Anyone who builds models knows that the the building part is the messy part. If I was doing more professional videos for YouTube, then yeah, I could uh, take the time to really record each step. But then I'd only be completing a model a year. And I don't have that kind of time. And apparently there's uh, people like videos like this too. So I'm just going to see what works. And the music you're hearing now won't be on the VOD. And we're adding in the bump stops for the su suspension arms. And we go to do the final assembly. I'm going to be torquing and twisting these to make sure they're all level. I know as we put it down, it'll cause them to level out a little bit too. But the more I can do beforehand, the better. So how have you been doing? Oh, excuse me. But I'll definitely be posting however far we get on this as part one. And I may stop stream once I think we've reached 
a stopping point reorganize and just do a regular twitch video but i wanted to try doing a video for rebroadcast on youtube as well actually let's stay on this side and just finish up going down so i will need e26 E18. I'm getting all the pieces I need off the one sprue while I've got it in my hand. Yep, then I'm going to need B34, B22, and one of the photo etch parts. I like these nippers though. They don't uh they don't deform too much. They cut clean for my purposes. I can understand why people want ones that cut cleaner for things like Gundam models because nine times out of ten you're not painting a Gundam. You are just snapping it together. And what you don't want is that stress area, right? You don't want that whitened plastic nub area. But if you're painting it, then it doesn't matter. And they can give you a cleaner uh, separation area too. But when it comes to scale stuff, you're usually going along looking for other things like mold seams and other bits anyway. It's not just where you nipped it. So let's look at all of this and how it goes together. Because this goes here, like that. Plastruct, P-L-A-S-T-R-U-C-T. I'll get the bottle out right here. also known as bonding as well. I know the Twitch chat won't be visible on the YouTube video. I apologize for that. Uh, one of the viewers is just asking which glue I was using and they're looking for it themselves. And thank you again for the bits. <laughs> we have the goat. I have a screaming goat, so. <laughs> I try to help when I can. And you've been on my channel before, so you know I'm not one to stick around for name brands just because I generally tend to use what works for me. Okay, and 
this. Goes here. All these pieces lock together pretty well, so I'm not too worried about them. The idler isn't going to be movable, and I didn't want to go through the hassle of making it movable had I tried making this radio control. All right, there is a photo etch part that will go on here. It goes right here. I will probably add that after everything because I don't want to deal with trying to keep it aligned while I'm doing everything else. This goes in here. And then I dropped it. This goes here and that goes there. Ta da! And we have a completed rear assembly unit minus the photo etch part. Okay, let's get the photo etch out and my tweezers. Because if I remember right, this one's weird. It just sits on the very, very edge. But there's no real clear indication of how it sits. It's one of these. And I may have to look at pictures of the real thing because they don't really show it in place very well. Yeah, I kind of have an idea. If I can get the clear film off of it. And when they come double-sided in this clear film, leave one side on. If you take both sides of the film off, when you clip out the photo etch part, it can go ping and fly across the room. But if you leave the adhesive film on, it doesn't go flying when you trim it. And there's a slight little, yep, let's just have it slide up onto the tweezers with the super glue. Now it's between my fingers, so I know it's not going anywhere, but neither are my fingers. There we go. All right, most of the glue stuck to my fingers. The problem is the part slid up into the tweezers and the tweezers touched the glue and the part was basically going to get glued to the tweezers. There we go. 
less glue, more tweezer, and then see if we can just get this in that little notch right there. If I'm not installing it backwards, like I just did. There we go. So it just fits right down like that. If autofocus would stay focused, there. All right. Anything else I miss? Nope. Let's repeat all the same stuff for the other side. And remember, the more you build, the more cluttered it gets. This is a good small size vehicle. Um, I've seen a lot of videos covering the finish of it and how to RC it. I haven't seen a lot covering. Oh, you heading out? Take it easy. Thanks for stopping by and thanks again for the bits. Um, I haven't seen a lot of videos covering the overall construction of it. At least not very in-depth, so I figured I'd see if this helps anybody out. Maybe uh, create a few pitfalls of my own, point out a few pitfalls of the kit itself. Not that there really are any. Little tabs lined up, it'll drop right in. <clears throat> Sorry about the cough. I pretty recently got over a pretty bad head and chest cold, and I'm still still got the lingering effects of it. Maybe what I should do is do just this first part of just the suspension, upload that, and then when we get to the upper hull, we'll do that and just do separate videos. Break it down into those chunks. That way you're not watching a long three-hour video of me just building the whole thing. So once we get to yeah, once we get to the part where we start working on the upper hull, we'll uh, cut and then we'll swing we'll switch to something else for twitch and then uh, we'll come back to this uh, probably tomorrow for the YouTube videos. So while I'm uploading the other video, I can be recording the next part. That way it keeps it bite-sized for YouTube, and it allows time for stuff to dry for me, and uh, it keeps things from getting too crazy stupid. I think we'll start out with like hour-long videos or so, instead of a three-hour marathon video. We'll see how long this one is. I think it's already over an hour. Yeah, it's an hour 23.
but I think like a two hour video covering the lower hull construction is good. What do y'all think of that? So yeah, we'll we'll pause. I'll switch over to something else, but I'm not done for the day yet. I'm actually in a pretty good mood today. Maybe keep that ball rolling, maybe. Alrighty. So let's get all the same pieces back out for the rear end on this side. And we'll try and keep it like this as much as we can. Um, I'm no good at editing. So just doing what I can to make it digestible for everybody else is good. And that's not me saying I want to hire out an editor. And I, the, yes, mouth no work well yet. That's not wanting to say that I want to hire an editor either. It's just, I don't have the ability or the means and I'm still a tiny, tiny, tiny YouTuber. I wonder if the free hugs will show up on the VOD. But you can also see why I wanted to keep that photo etch part off of the pieces until it was all together. While it's a bit fiddly to fit in there, I could see myself snapping it off three times just trying to fit all this stuff together. Okay, one more piece. Big shock absorber, where did it go? There it is. Yeah, we'll get we'll get through the suspension part today. Because after that, it goes into the road wheels, which we're not doing yet. We'll be holding them out to probably almost last. And then once the road wheels or once that's done, it goes into the detailing that goes here and here, and then in the upper hull. And I said I wanted to figure out a second crew figure for the driver's compartment before I did that. Okay, so that can go there. Why do you seem higher than the other one? Only a little Willie Nelson. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, 
Is that the Amazon model wishlist? Isn't that what Solway uses too? Okay. I might consider doing that as well, all things considered. <laughs> And don't forget to put supplies on there, too. You can get supplies through Amazon. Um, while somebody may not want to help people out with kits or anything like that, they can be a bit more uh, forthcoming when it comes to things like glue, paints, exacto blades. And you go through that a lot more than you do the kits. But just like with the bits, every little helps. I appreciate all my viewers. Especially the ones who've hung around for all the uh, almost six years now that I've been streaming. Now my back itches. Itchy, itchy back. So when this goes up on YouTube, it'll probably be titled... Um, TACOM 116th Weasel Part 1 Suspension. Yeah, because I found a lot of times people balk at kit prices these days. But they'll throw down all day for supplies. Like every time a Twitch payout happens, since it's so little these days, they've cut it down to 50 bucks instead of the 100 it used to be. You know as well as I do, 50 doesn't really buy you squat when it comes to models anymore. You need 70 or more for anything big, you know, for anything needy and chunky. But 50 can buy you a lot of paint and a lot of glue. All right, there we go. There we go. Make sure we're done with suspension parts. Yep. Next, it looks like we're going into road wheels which we'll skip, and then hull detailing, which we will make the next part. Because there's nothing else that goes inside, I would like to actually glue the upper hull to the lower hull before we start doing anything else. Um, simply because I don't want to snap things off the lower hull while I'm trying to glue the upper hull on at that time. We have an alley cat at our feet. Yeah. We'll go about it that way. So I'll get the second crew figure sorted out. And then we will start the next video, gluing the upper hull and lower hull together. And then adding details all around. So thank you everybody for watching. We I hope you enjoy this video. Like, comment, and subscribe since this is going up on YouTube as well. And uh, hope to see you on the next video. Thank you.